The E-Move Cruiser S has landed and it sent shockwaves roaring across the commuter scooter landscape. Not only does it retain the same stratospheric maximum range as its predecessor, but this time around it comes accompanied by a plethora of upgrades that make it an altogether better ride. It was a first for a single motor model, it now features a sine wave controller. Combined with the new ergonomic thumb throttle, it achieves a supremely smooth acceleration curve. Then there are the self-healing tyres, improved stem clamp and four colour display that combine to build upon what was already a successful blueprint. Improving a scooter that's previously won two of our annual Electric Scooter Insider Awards, as voted for by thousands of riders, is no mean feat, but the Emu Cruiser S has managed it with swagger and the best bit of all, it cost the same as the original. So do you want to know more? Well let's dive into its design and features, results from my performance test and see how it stacks up against some alternative scooters. Kicking off this in-depth look at the cruiser's design is the cockpit which introduces a couple of exciting upgrades. First there's a new thumb throttle, previously the cruiser was equipped with a trigger style finger throttle that forced you to adopt a claw like grip, now the throttle is ergonomically positioned making it more comfortable to ride for long periods. And then you have the updated four colour LCD display which is both brighter and more clear than before. Through it you can monitor your key stats whilst toggling a host of P settings to customise your riding experience including the adjustment of your acceleration and electronic braking strength. The handlebars measure 25 inches wide making them among the widest of all commute scooters. This coupled with the flared hand grips and and easy to reach light and horn controls allow you to ride with a strong sense of balance, control and safety. One area of the cockpit that could be improved though is the key lock ignition. I much prefer a simple on off button and a digital password as it means you're never at risk of forgetting your keys or losing them. Nevertheless, the attached voltmeter gives you an accurate readout of your battery level so that you can ride without range anxiety. As for the rest of the frame, it's one of the few scooters that gives you a choice of multiple colours including black, white, purple, blue, red and orange. It's not all aesthetic though. As I experienced with the old Cruiser which I've ridden for the last three years, one thing you can count on is a frame that's tough as nails. Well balanced and extremely durable, it takes the rigours of daily riding in its stride and true to its purpose as an all weather commute scooter, its water resistance rating of IPX6 is just about the best you'll find on any electric scooter, making it well placed to weather the storms of everyday use. The telescopic stem also now benefits from an even stronger stem clamp to ensure that it locks firmly in place and doesn't slide down while riding. That said, its maximum deck to handlebar height is 39 inches, making it a little bit too short for riders over 6 feet. Where there's ample room however is on the deck, with 23 by 7.75 inches of a available foot space, riders of all sizes will have enough room. The same can't be said for the 4.5 inches of ground clearance though here, you need to be careful when dismounting curbs. Now thanks to the large deck, the Cruiser S is one of the few electric scooters that gives you the option to fit a seat to it. This optional accessory is a welcome addition to an already comfortable ride and it will come in handy for long journeys where you want to rest your legs. Now one of the main upgrades that the Cruiser S brings to the table is the addition of self healing tyres. How do they self heal? Well after further investigation it turns out that the inner lining of the tyres has been filled with Dr Orange tyre sealant. This is particularly handy considering the scooter's gargantuan range but it's not foolproof. If your tyres get penetrated by any sharp objects the sealant will work its magic to fill the cavity and prevent air loss but I still recommend replacing them since tyre sealant is more of a temporary measure to ensure that your day isn't ruined by a flat. Aside from the addition of the sealant, the 10 inch car grade tubeless tyres have remained largely the same and sport a profile that not only maintains traction but promises a layer of shock absorption. Then there's the cruiser's portability credentials. Tipping the scales at £52 is not the lightest scooter but it's also not a monster either, especially when you consider that the average weight of other long range electric scooters is 
88 pounds. Besides, not only does it have a telescopic stem that you can retract, but the handlebars can be folded down in a matter of seconds. The cantilever folding mechanism is simple to use too. By pulling on the locking pin, you can collapse the stem to the deck. It takes some effort, but this is good since the stem and chassis stay firmly locked into place when the scooter's upright. And the scooter needs to be strong because it has the highest load bearing capacity of all the 100 plus electric scooters in our database, where it can support riders of up to 352 pounds. Considering that the average load for a scooter in its class is 265 pounds, this is a feather in its cap and a key reason why it's destined to succeed as a popular model for heavy riders. Elsewhere, with a bright headlight mounted low on the stem and a duo of button LEDs embedded into the fore of the deck, the Cruiser S just about passes the mark for riding at night. However, I still recommend attaching an additional clip-on headlight for even greater visibility. At the rear, you'll find a trio of tail lights. The deck lights function as turn signals, but none of the tail lights flash when braking. Instead, they simply just light up red for the duration of when you're pulling on the brake levers. And finally, what about build quality? Well, when I reviewed the old eMove Cruiser, I was impressed with its robustness and durability. I even took it out for a spin over some rocky off-road tracks, yet it withstood this beating and continued to perform once I got it back into the playground of the city. Now, this isn't to say that it can handle off-road terrain but it did show me that this little tank was built to last considering that the eMove Cruiser S has the exact frame the same can be said for the new model and while the Cruiser S shares the successful blueprint that made its predecessor such a popular scooter it turns the build quality dial up a notch with the smattering of upgrades that I've already touched on throughout the review along with the neatly bunched cables reinforced fenders and plug and play connectors, you can tell that the cruiser was built with acute attention to detail. Equipped with a large 52 volt, 1000 watt rear mounted motor, it achieves a top speed of 33 miles per hour, which as you'll soon see is quite impressive for its price. Typically commuting doesn't require rip roaring speeds and from my experience testing this scooter through busy environments, its speed and acceleration are ideal. Applying a $500 bracket around the cruiser's price tag reveals six comparable models for top speed and it makes for pretty reading. It secures second place behind the Splash Titan. It should be noted though that the Splash serves an entirely different purpose to the cruiser. As opposed to being a commute scooter, the Titan is an all-terrain dual motor juggernaut. As for acceleration, well against the backdrop of the cruiser's closest competitors and the scooters that I recommend as alternatives, it's the slowest here. The explosive power of the Splash Titan's dual 52 volt 1000 watt motors is clear to see. They leave the cruiser in the dust with an acceleration rate that is on average 43% faster. And then there's the Fluid Vista. While it, like the cruiser, has a 1000 watt motor, it operates at 60 volts. This results in greater torque for a pacier start out of the blocks and beyond. Nevertheless, hitting 15 miles per hour in 3.8 seconds and 25 miles per hour in 10.3 seconds is commendable for a single motor scooter. Where you really feel the full majesty of the cruiser's power though is from that new sine wave controller that produces a supremely smooth acceleration curve. The same can't be said for the Fluid Vista and its jerky throttle response. On the topic of power, let's take a look at its hill climbing credentials. Now, because the Cruiser is a single motor scooter, it doesn't have the same hill climbing prowess as a dual motor model like the Splash Titan. However, it still has enough gusto to conquer moderate inclines. The maximum manufacturer quoted incline is 20 degrees, and according to my test, the optimal incline is 12 degrees. Next up, we have mileage, and this is the Cruiser's greatest asset. It crushes the competition. Ah, oh, with a humongous 50 
32 volt, 30 amp hour LG battery, it can breeze through an incredible 62 mile range under best case conditions or 48 miles under real world riding conditions. During my test, I weighed 190 pounds, including safety gear, and rode the scooter around a circuit of undulating city streets. The riding conditions included periods of fast acceleration, cruising, and multiple stops. The temperature was 57.6 Fahrenheit and the wind was 13.8 miles per hour. Comparing the Cruiser S to the models within its price class, it's no surprise to see that it rules the roost where its head and shoulders above its competition. Its closest rival, the Fluid Vista, has a maximum range that's a whole 17 miles shorter than the Cruiser. One factor that's important for long range rides is comfort and thanks to the front coils and rear shocks, it serves up a suspension package that makes riding on roads a smooth experience. On a scale of one to 10, where one is extremely stiff and 10 is extremely soft, I rate it a six. Similarly important is braking strength. The 140 millimeter hybrid hydraulic disc brakes bring you to a complete stop from 15 miles per hour in 2.6 meters, making it a top performer in the commuter scooter class. What's striking about its brakes though is the fact that it's quite rare to find a sub $1,500 model with hydraulics. Despite the cruiser setup being semi-hydraulic where it combines mechanical brake cables with hydraulic calipers, they promise firm control. So far, the cruiser's looking good, but how does it feel to ride well? From the plush car gray tires and dual suspension system to the adjustable handlebar height and expansive deck, it maintains its reputation as a comfortable commute scooter. Combined with the thoughtfully designed cockpit, it enables you to cruise for impressive distances without getting too fatigued. Possibly the biggest contributing factor to its ride quality is the silky smooth throttle. There's also something to be said for the heavy deck located battery that makes the cruiser feel planted at all times. So here comes the big question. Is the Emove Cruiser S worth buying and does it represent good value for money? Put simply, that's like asking if Antarctica is cold. You see, it promises exceptional value. Not only has the new S model brought noteworthy upgrades to the table, but the cruiser's greatest draw remains the same. Its combination of a super long range, compactable frame, and affordable price tag make it unique in a sea of competing scooters. By comparison, scooters with similar range credentials cost upwards of double the cruiser's price tag. Pros include it offers superb value for money, it's the first single motor scooter with a sine wave controller, it has unparalleled range in its price class, smooth suspension, self-healing tires, the collapsible handlebars make it compact when folded, a telescopic stem allows you to adjust the handlebar height, the new thumb throttle improves ride comfort, it's a great option for heavy riders, the semi-hydraulic brakes are sharp and responsive, and you get an IPX6 water resistance rating as well as the option of adding a seat. Cons include it only has 4.5 inches of ground clearance, meaning it's best to avoid curbs and the brake lights don't flash. But of course, it does have some competitors that you may want to consider. And these include the Splash Titan and Fluid Vista, both serve entirely different purposes. The Splash is aimed more towards riders that want a budget dual motor performance scooter that can tackle all kinds of terrain. Now, this may seem like an odd alternative to the Cruiser at first, but when we consider that it's in the same price bracket, it becomes a worthy contender. Then there's the Fluid Vista. This is a commuter scooter at heart and a lower maintenance alternative to the cruiser. To help you decide which may be best for your needs, let's quickly run through the areas where they're either better or worse than the cruiser. Kicking things off, the Splash Titan costs less, has double the motor power, a 43% faster acceleration rate, a superior suspension setup, and all the terrain riding credentials. It also has a better lighting rig and is better suited to tall riders. However, it has an 18 mile shorter range, supports 132 pounds less 
Rider Riderweight is 12 pounds heavier, not as portable because of its larger frame, and the deck is 3.5 inches shorter, meaning less space for big feet. Next, let's take a look at the Vista. It costs less than the Cruiser, has a 26% faster acceleration rate, solid tires that afford even lower maintenance, and it benefits from an adjustable suspension system. It also has a more efficient folding mechanism, a mobile app that allows for deeper customization of your performance settings, and you can enable a digital lock. But it has a 17 mile shorter range, supports 87 pounds less rider weight, and is eight pounds heavier. It's also not as portable because of its larger frame. The deck is five inches shorter, its handling isn't as good, and the throttle is jerky. To find out more about the E-Move Cruiser S and the alternatives, head to the description where you'll find links to the scooters and my reviews. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.